road. <laughs> We're not bass fishing today. We are catching these guys. Delicious, delicious pumping up. Hey, I'm Joe, and thanks for watching the video. This is Do It Yourself Saltwater Fishing Rigs for Whiting and Pompano. I apologize for the echo right off the bat. I'm in my office, and there's not a whole lot of stuff in here. But anyway, uh, we're just going to jump right into it. This is to teach you guys how to tie your own Pompano and Whiting Rigs right there on the spot using your main line. Of course, you need to use either monofilament or fluorocarbon. I'm not going to go into detail about my whole surf fishing rig. If you guys would like, I'll make that a whole other video. Yeah, just let me know down in the comments below. This is just to show you how to make the rig itself. And uh, you can have it on your main line, that way you're not having to pull out different pompano rigs and retie them every time. You can just keep snipping up your line and adding this to it and not have to spend any money. You can just do it right there on the spot. But you are going to need some terminal tackle and we'll go over that right now. Okay, so first things first, for main line, what I use, is the uh, Cast King braided line in high vis yellow. That way the stupid beach goers that like to walk right through your line, at least you can say uh, it was high vis, they should have seen it. So that's why, and plus, you know, it helps me to kind of see what direction if my weight's drifting or anything. That's why I like using high vis line. And the reason I use braid is there's no stretch. So when that pumping or wine takes it, there's not a whole lot of stretch. That circle hook's gonna do the work. For the leader line, and I usually put about six to ten feet of it on my reel. I use the uh, Seaguar Red Label 15 pound test fluorocarbon. I like fluorocarbon. You only need 15 pound test. We're talking fish that are you know anywhere from six inches up to maybe like 20 inches. You know, like a four pound pompano is a really big pompano. He's not going to break that 15 pound line. Really, it's hardly going to be anything that's going to break this 15 pound line. Uh, maybe you know bluefish and sharks are going to be your biggest worry. But fluorocarbon, definitely. Definitely gonna have fluorocarbon, like clear water. All right, next we're gonna be talking hooks. There's two kinds of hooks that I use. I either use a one alt circle hook. That way when the fish grabs it, it hooks itself. Oh, you don't have to run over there and slam the hook. You just go over there and just start reeling it. And also use a one alt kale hook. These hooks are made for live bait, but you can use them with sand fleas, shrimp, clams, anything, uh, fish bites, and they're razor sharp. And it's, it's another thing, it, the fish practically hook yourself, especially like I said, when you're using braided line that has no stretch. All right, apart from hooks, then you're gonna need weights. Uh, there's three different types of weights that people really use for uh, surf fishing. You got your good standard uh, pyramid weight, you know, depending on the current, you use anywhere from two to three ounces or even less, depending on where you're located. On the Atlantic coast of Florida where I'm at, the, we have pretty strong currents. And when it's real strong, you don't want to throw a whole lot of weight. You can use what they call uh, these Sputnik weights, or spider weights is another name that they use for them. It's just some lead with wire, and they have a little wire prong sticking out that grip into the sand, but when you go to set the hook, they pop out and they'll fold over. That way you can reel the fish, fish in without this thing grabbing and digging into the sand anymore. And also there's another weight, I don't have one with me, but I'll flash a picture up right now of it, called a storm sinker or storm weight. Uh, pretty much what this weight's designed to do when you cast it, when it initially goes into the sand, it drives into the sand and acts like a sand spike and pulls your bait there. Uh, they're definitely cheaper. The pyramid weight and the storm sinker are going to be a lot cheaper than using the spider weight slash Sputnik weight. These cost about five dollars a piece. Where your little pyramid sinkers, if you get on eBay, you can get like twenty of them for like twelve bucks or twenty bucks. You know, something something crazy. There's always someone selling those a lot cheaper because the molds are more readable and they're uh, easier to make. All right, so if we're making the pompano rig, we're going to need floats, right? So you can use anything from trout floats. Now when I say trout floats, I don't mean sea trout, I mean the rainbow trout. If you go online, you can look, they have little small strike indicators, you can use those. Or I found these on eBay, they're called uh, spin drifters. It's what guys use for walleye fishing. They have little wings on them, so they'll, not only do they float, they also create movement and vibration and attract, you know, a little added benefit. 
And they got different colors. Like I said on eBay, I think I got all these for like 20 bucks. They're four packs with seven of them in there. They got different colors. They got pink. You got neon with spots. You got what I would call a fire tiger. And they even have glow in the dark. Now, I don't know anyone who goes out there pumping or fishing with glow in the dark. Or out at night, I mean. But uh, if you want to give it a try, you know, or you got dingy water, this might work. Okay, for whiting, I typically don't use a float because if you ever look at the anatomy of a whiting, their mouth faces down. They're usually feeding on the bottom and looking and scavenging and looking for shells and stuff on the bottom. So with them, I just use, all I use is a bead. Uh, you know, you can use green, red, people use pink, purple, just something to kind of make your, you know, to catch their eye when they come by your bait. So typically when I'm using a whiting rig, all I use is a bead instead of a float. But not to say you can't catch whiting using a float. I'm not saying that at all, but their main focus is towards the bottom and looking down. So that's why I don't use a float. Okay, so now we're actually going to tie our rig. And we're going to start at the bottom. We're going to start at the bottom where our weight goes. So you just take the end of your leader, and it's really simple. All you do is just make a loop, get you a pretty decent amount of space, and then all we're going to do is tie a double overhand knot. That's it, it's that simple. So you, you got a regular knot, you go around it twice, then you're going to wet it. Just use your mouth, use your saliva. And then you're just going to pull it tight. You want to try to keep the knot more towards the top. So you can just roll it down there. Now I've been doing this for about 20 years. I've never had one of these knots slide or give out on me when you do that. And what that does is, by creating that loop, Take your weight, you take your loop, put it through the weight, like so, come all the way around it, and slide the weight right up on there. Now you can take your weight on and off, and there's not a big swivel down there for the fish to see. I'm like I said, it's every bit of terminal tackle that we can take off of this, the better. It may suggest that much more stealthy. There's one catch to this though. So I'm going to take this back off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now on the pyramid sinkers, it works great because this eye is fully enclosed inside the lip. Now when you get a Sputnik weight or a spider weight, oftentimes the eye will have an opening right here on one end. And if you're not careful, it'll slip right off of that loop. So in that circumstance, you're, you're pretty much either, even with a swivel, unless it has a real thick wire, it can still come off. So you'd have to actually tie it like a Palomar knot or you know some kind of actual knot to this to keep it from slipping off. And even then, you still t stand a chance. The only way you could probably fix it is to get a pair of strong pliers and uh, close in that eye. But for demonstration purposes, we'll go back to the good old pyramid sinker, which is what most everybody fishes with anyway. So you'd have your bottom loop for your pyramid sinker. Now we're going to move up. We're going to go up the line. Probably going to go up the line about eight to ten inches. Is what I like to do. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to double up the line. Just like we did before. Put a loop in it. We're going to go twice around it. Just doing regular overhand knots. And then we're probably going to come out from our main line about two inches. Now I didn't wet that one there because I forgot about it, so don't you forget about it. All right, so now we got another loop, right? So we got that loop, and we got our weight. Now, you, if you just wanted to fish with one hook, this is where you would stop. But most often, a lot of people fish with two hooks when we're fishing with pompano and white. 
So we're gonna go up the line again, probably another eight inches or so. Same thing, double up. Just two overhand knots. So weight your line. Come off about two inches. You can see I'm messing with the knot there. And there we go. We're almost there. That rig that everybody else is paying, uh, you know, anywhere from four to eight dollars or even ten dollars for. We just made the basis of it right now. But it ain't done, right? So now we gotta add weights and hooks to this thing. Or I said in the beginning, I like to use just a bead when I'm using uh, fishing for whining or I'm mostly targeting whining. So you take that loop, pinch it in pretty good so you get it tight so you can fit through the hole of the bead. Run your bead down on it. Whatever color you want, purple, pink, green, just whatever you feel like it's working. You know, of course, you have to go by a watercolor. It's more stain the water, more bright of a color bead you want. All right, we're going to do the same thing, just like the weight. We're going to pinch this in, and we're going to put it through the eye of the hook. Okay, and then we're going to go all the way around the hook. When you go around, make sure you come above the eye of the hook. And then we're going to tighten it down. And there's our bead and there's our hook on the first one. Now, like I said, if you were going after whitey and you wanted the float, you could throw a float on both of these or a bead on both of these, whichever. So now we're going to do the float next on our next empty one. Same thing, just going to pinch it. Sometimes when I know I got a real tight float or bead or anything or eye of the hook, I'll use the corner of my teeth. Try not to kink it, but just kind of help it out. Alright, I'm going to push the float through. Now we got our float. See what I was talking about, how it spins? Pretty cool, huh? Found it by accident on eBay. Do with me. And I'm really hating how this camera's going out of focus. All right, we got our float on. Now we're going to take cable hook. It's called either two hooks I have out. You can use two circle hooks, two cable hooks, whatever you feel like using. And these are one alt hooks, by the way, because what we're going after has small mouths. Same thing. Just nail that down on there. Now you get your float right there next to your hook. That'll float it up. And there you go. There's your own do-it-yourself Pompano whiting rig for surf fishing. Didn't cost you anything. And if any of this breaks off, all you do is just keep moving it on up the line unless you gotta put another leader on. If all you have is fluoro, then man, you're golden. So you didn't have to go to the store, if, you could, if they didn't have pompano or whiting rigs at the store anyway, all you have to do is buy the terminal tackle and you're good to go. And that's how easy it is. This part of the line right here, either you can put a swivel on there and this right here alone will be your rig. Or like when I said, I use about six to eight feet and I tie it with a uni to uni knot. You guys can look up that knot on YouTube or maybe later on I might do a video myself on how to tie that knot to attach fluorocarbon to your braid. Or if you have all fluorocarbon or monofilament on your rod, then you're golden. You just keep working your way on up. It's like say a blue fish cuts this off and you can just keep making leaders all the way up. The reason I use overhand knots instead of tropper loops is just that anybody can tie an overhand knot. If you can tie your shoes, you can tie this knot. And I've never had a problem with this knot going out on me or sliding up or anything. If you want to use dropper loops, you can use dropper loops. But like I said, the ease of this is when you go home and you're done for the day, instead of these weights banging around and getting all tangled up in your line, and we've all been there, you can just take this off and put your weight back in the box. Same thing with the hooks and reason, use them for next time. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. If you did, 
leave me a thumbs up because it helps me out. And if you go out there and use this ring, let me know down there in the comments below. If there's anything else you would like to see also, leave me a comment so I know so I can make a video for it to try to help you out. I'm Joe, this is Dev4 Outdoors. If you're not already a subscriber, please click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you know when the next video comes out. Who knows, it might be another do yourself video that, that, you know, more things to help each other out. So, I'm Joe, this is Dev4 Outdoors, as I already said. And remember, we do more than this one. We'll see you next time. Dismore Outdoors is proudly sponsored by Bruiser Baits, fish the best. Vexen Rods, strike first with Vexen. And Real Gear, make fishing your style.